Hi, I'm Ben Crow. Welcome to Crimson Guitars. Welcome to my workshop. I am going to give you a bit of a tour, show you some of the various tools and machines, etc., that I use in day-to-day -day guitar building. And uh, at the end of this video, you're going to see time-lapse footage of the change around. It seems once a year, I grow discontented and uh, mix things up. And it's nowhere near finished yet. Come on over, have a look. Burn it. Ha <laughs> ha, yay! First of all, we have the workshop squirrel. Because, because we do. <laughs> okay, look, so essentially guitar building, there's a, there's a lot of very standard tools. Uh, check out coffee mug is the most important tool. John Clothier, fantastic turner, johnclothier.co.uk. There's a lot of standard woodworking tools that, um, that goes into building guitars and then I play around with a lot of other things. So I like to be able to have as much, I, I, I collect tools and I try and um, justify that at every you know, possible juncture. So I like to be flexible and have everything I need. Now, I don't do traditional wood carving, uh, not very often, but you know, is there ever a reason to not have a giant Buck Brothers spoon carving gouge? Um, so I've, I've used that in various builds and bits and pieces, and uh, essentially you can never have enough carving gouges. Um, there are a multitude of different shapes I can do and have done letter cutting, various engraving bits and pieces, up to and including full calves. Um, <clears throat> I'm really tempted to do some checkering on a build. Uh, really tempted to do that, like today, actually. Uh, anyway, so very quickly, wood carving comes in handful, uh, handful, helpful, useful. We're not even supposed to edit this, so all of my stupidities are going to come out. I can't believe this. Um, now, I have been using Japanese saws forever. This one is uh, very new to me, actually. Um, uh, rip and cross cut uh, in one. They are just fantastic tools. Uh, you should check out um, workshopheaven.co.uk. Uh, Matthew, who runs that, is fantastic. Uh, and. Uh, uh, yeah, that's that's where I got these from and various other bits and pieces. Uh, I also have a small collection of beautiful little hammers that I, I do use. They're artisanal and uh, these are by BC Woodworks. Uh, Brian is, again, incredible. Now, so I'll use those for inlay bits and pieces. Uh, that's my little plane saw that uh, we made here for fun. Uh, this is a chisel hammer. It's a uh, it's supposed to be for doing dovetails. This was by David Barron, who doesn't make them anymore. And uh, I don't use it very much, but, you know, I do. Uh, I do like it. And then I collect hammers, and, and you can see um, the various vintage tools. This is the smallest tip of the iceberg. My, um, you have, I mean, check this out. That looks very un, unimpressive, doesn't it, really? Not the original handle. That there is like a 300 or 400 year old hammer. And I love it. And I, I don't care what you think. And uh, there's other bits and pieces like that. Uh, I, just, I just absolutely adore. Um, so um, I have a, a side business that sort of ended up growing up by mistake, and that's uh, vintagetoolshop.com, where a lot of these come from. Um, I use a lot of saws. Uh, that was new to me today. Buck, uh, very, very good London uh, hardware store. Um, so yeah, I, I use a lot of tiny little saws and bits and pieces, and that's fairly self-explanatory. Lots of hammers. Lancashire pattern hacksaws are unnecessarily gorgeous. And I literally have one of these on the wall in my dining room just because it's beautiful. 
and uh, yeah, they're stunning. So uh, yeah, I use, I've had, this is one of my oldest um, vintage tools. I've had this for years and years and years. Uh, it's been modified to take a modern blade without, which is somewhat depressing because I did it. And I didn't do it very well. Um, but you know, you've got the vintage, you've got the antique, you've got new. Uh, this is by Thomas Flynn, it's a veneer saw, they're fantastic. I use the Japanese saws as and when I can. Uh, again, fantastic carver's mallets by uh, BC Woodworks. And uh, these, look at that. Um, he, he just does superb work. And, uh, and I use these all the time. I still have my original mallet that was made uh, by a former business partner of mine from years and years and years ago. And uh, yeah, it's, tools are one of those things. You can see something utterly beautiful and unnecessarily beautiful, as I said earlier. These extra designs here in this saw are not required but it just makes the whole process of creating with it just that much better. And, and this comes across, I think, uh, in, in the work of any craftsman that would use something like this. Um, and uh, yeah, now here is another saw. I've used this a lot. Uh, this is by Greyhound, who are a, a UK, they handmade in the UK, fantastic little company. Uh, I was talking to the man and uh, just randomly talking to him while looking at his wares and I picked this up and it just melted into my hand and I didn't realise but I stopped talking and he was standing there just grinning at me and uh, I had to have it. So yeah, things like that. Uh, I have been playing with this giant Lee Nielsen. Uh, I've had this for, for a couple of years now actually and for a mass-produced saw, uh, it's, it's got the sharp edges. You've got, they haven't really thought about the fact that you're gonna wanna put a finger there. That's not comfortable. Um, in fact, it's sharp enough to probably hurt if I really tried. But that being said, it is a superb tool. And uh, I go from that, which was made several years ago, to something made in the uh, 19, well, these guys were established in 1770. This is uh, probably 1850s, maybe, thereabouts. Uh, and yeah, I suppose with saws as with tools as with guitars, the correct number is X plus one, X being what you currently have. Um, but then, so that's relatively general woodworking tools. And I then go to uh, for example, this is a, a crimson inlay jig. It's a special edition we did with, uh, with Ebony. Uh, but I use this for cutting out inlays and doing fine work raised up on the bench quite high like so. Well, I put it in a vise, of course. Um, but uh, that is used and is very useful. You can never have enough marking tools. Um, you know, you, you need vernier uh, or dial calipers, I've got several. Um, especially with guitar building, there is a lot of precision involved. Uh, these are insane. Um, Morn Industries make them. Uh, there are another couple of companies that do them as well. And you can see how you've got a very, str it's undercut. So the teeth are, have got a lot of meat behind them because it's undercut in that way. These cutters are much, much stronger than your average uh, pair and they'll last forever. I've got uh, end cutters as well by the same company and and other bits and pieces. Bernard are another company that made that pattern. Parallel. I've had these since the shed. <laughs> I love it. Uh, now something that comes from a different trade that I use a lot. Uh, these are jewelers pliers. Uh, so for example watch me lose my, my wedding ring. You will put a, a ring or something in there to hold it uh, and then knock that piece down to lock it in place, for example. Uh, same thing up in here. Let me put that back on before I lose it because I will get into trouble. 
Um, I use this for, for inlet work. So if I'm cutting a small piece of uh, mother of pearl, for example, for a guitar, I'll put that in there and lock it off and uh, you know, it, it, makes, it makes the whole thing much easier. Lancashire pattern. I've got uh, the dividers as well, for example, there. Just the fact that these were forged from a single piece of metal with the spring uh, an integral part it just makes me happy. Yeah. Okay, various other bits and pieces, dividers, adjustable squares. I love the Stanley ones. Uh, Everybody needs a little square, or a little square. Again, I've had this one since, uh, I've had this one since about 2001. Yes, I feel old now. Uh, this, oh no, not that, this, look at this. So this came through from vintagetoolshop.com, but the gentleman that, uh, that owned this uh, was the former director of Morris Minor. Uh, when it was first started, and uh, it's it's just amazing the whole the whole thing. Um, I've seen this with the Holtzapfel name on it instead of Evans, and uh, those are hundreds of pounds. But uh, anyway, beautiful and fully functional. And then this is a pair of uh, uh, winged compasses <laughs> with a modern Triton pencil in it because. I like the dichotomy. And again, it's got this friction lock. So you, you knock that down and it compresses it. And uh, yeah, you've got everything you need. Just, just beautiful. And again, you've got this, the decoration here that you don't tend to get in modern tools. I would love to start a company that manufactured tools like this with this unnecessary attention to detail. Um, or is it necessary? I think it is necessary. Um, this is one of my favorite drills. We've always got a one and a half or a two mil bit in it. Uh, this is 1890s by Miller's Falls. It's a number one Coca-Cola handle. You've got the original bits that were in it. I, I just, I'm waxing lyrical. Every workshop needs a brush or two. And every workshop needs a plethora of hand planes. Uh, so I go from modern, I've got uh, low angle Lee Nielsen's, I use this a lot, through to, this is a, one, it's a budget Norris, but it's pretty much a number three size. And these were made with incredible, I need to sharpen this one, um, incredibly tight mouths. And the tighter the mouth is, the finer the, uh, the shaving, the finer that the shaving can be. Uh, essentially, as you're pushing a plane through the wood, it, it raises the shaving. And if the back of the shaving is supported by this section here, then the shaving doesn't crack off underneath the grain or underneath the plane angle that you're trying to plane. <sighs> There's words in there somewhere. I'm getting tired. I'm, I'm getting excited and it's making me tired. Um, so yeah, you don't get tear out if you've got a nice tight mouth. Um, so uh, that was a, f a fairly budget Norris, various Stanley's bedrocks. I love, that's my Stanley number two. I don't use it very much. Um, I don't use it very much. This here is my newest acquisition. Uh, with the tool shop, I clear, I, I buy a lot of workshops and I, I do it, uh, I get tools that have been in a workshop uh, for example, if somebody has, has, has died and uh, it might not be dealt with for years and years and years, and then I take those tools and within weeks I have tools that are in use in other people's hands and it's, it's, it makes me happy. Um, but this one was handmade by the gentleman um, and it's got one of the most comfortable, again, like that saw, my hand, it feels like that was built for me. And I love it, and, and I love it, and I love it. And, and, and I just, I love it. So, yeah, there we go. Okay, uh, we need to speed this up a little bit. We have gouges, 
standard gouges. This here is John Green. So this gouge that I use regularly was made. I'm fairly sure I'm right in saying 1690. 1790? Hundreds of years ago. <laughs> ah, somebody in the comments below is going to tell me the actual date of John Green because it's completely fled my mind right now. Um, so I've got a lot of gouges that are standard with the, gra uh, with the bevel on the outside and then we also use inside ground gouges here for going in, in internal corners. Some old style crimson inlay chisels. We use files and rasps all the time as well, in particular the Shinto saw rasp. We sell these in our store. The, the first time I carved a guitar neck, it took me two days. The second, third, fourth, fifth, twentieth time I carved a guitar neck, I was using traditional, very nice, but traditional rasps, and it took forever. This, I can do it in 30, 40 minutes. And that's actually relaxing. Okay. I just... It's just, there's just too much. Uh, again, we've got a James Howarth uh, pairing chisel here, which is 100 plus years old, right next to a set of, well, Narex. Again, these are from Workshop Heaven, and Ashley Isles, um, UK made. I think Narex is Austrian. Uh, you know, there, is, uh, there, are, there are vintage tools that are fantastic steel. There are modern tools that are fantastic steel. And I particularly like the, the half round of these Ashley Isles. It, they some of my favorite chisels. <gasps> yeah. Sticky stuff. I want to stop filming right now and just clean everything. Um, okay, so rasps. These are the Iwasaki rasps. They're fantastic. It's essentially a thousand little planes on a rasp. As long as you're going with the grain. They're incredible. Um, and uh, yeah, we again have these in stock in, in, in our store. Here is another utterly beautiful, this is an awl that Brian from BC Woodworks made me. This is turning into an advert for, for, for BC Woodworks. Ha, huh. I don't begrudge him that, he's fantastic. I have all of these planes, lots of planes. I use spoke shaves, irregularly, but when I do, I really, really like them. This one is, uh, it's also got a tiny, tiny, tiny mouth. Uh, this is HNT Gordon, they're Australian. Um, and then this is really antique with the uh, rosewood. So this is a, this is actually a, a leather workers uh, spoke shave, can you believe it? But low angle, full adjustment, that makes the blade go in and out. Uh, and I use that quite a lot. Um, we do have small squirrel tail planes and router planes. This is a Lee Nielsen. This is a Kuangshang. So I'm experimenting with those two. I don't need both of them. One of them will end up at home uh, in my other workshop and, and, and one will stay here and we'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm intrigued. I did, if you're interested, go to Crimson Guitars Extras where you can see a video of me machine turning the side and making it unnecessarily beautiful. How many times can I say that today? Too many, I think is the answer. I don't need this many planes. Don't tell anybody who knows me. Um, in reality, a block plane of some sort, a, I, I need those ones. I, I do need those ones. Just, just, just leave me alone. Um, you need a jointing plane, so a number seven or an eight for guitar, for electric guitar building at least. You need a, uh, a block plane, preferably low angle, but either will do. Uh, and you would need a number four or uh, number three is actually my preferential size. Everything else is just to do the job slightly better. Uh, I have, again, a Kuangshang from Workshop Heaven, low angle plane. Uh, I use this quite a lot. I have also uh, got the Lee Nielsen version that came through my shop. Um, I've got number fives. I've got a, a number 10 rebate plane. I don't use the rebate function of this very often at all. But one day, 
when I need to. I thought there was rust on it. It's not rust, it's Paduk dust. Um, <laughs> oh, the horror. But when I do need it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it. Um, now, there are, yeah, for example, it's a whale. It's also a violin maker's plane, but, but it's a whale. Why? And then here is a little boxwood. This is by uh, Bill Carter. He's, a, he's one of the UK's plane makers. Um, he, he made this one. And this is, a, this is a collectible, beautiful, dovetailed bronze plane. Incredible mouth. I love the sort of iridescence you get from, from using it and going through the pattern. Um, and I, I love this. It's, it's, a, it's a valuable collector's item plane, but I use it because it has to be, it wants to be used. And uh, that's, it's one of my favorite tools actually. Um, so, do I need all of these planes? No. Will they find a use? Yes. Uh, these are violin makers' planes for, for carving uh, tops, it's, it's curved, etc. I, I use them rarely, but when I need them, they're the tools that I need. Now, at Crimson, we manufacture a lot of tools, fret end beveling, fret leveling files, uh, not straight edges for, for, for guitar and for bass, various different things, standard straight edges. Uh, there are, if you're interested in guitar building, we have the tool for you. Um, through to fret pullers, fret end cutters. Uh, the first uh, five-sided fret rocker, this will do um, mandolins and ukuleles, etc., as well as guitars. And, I mean, look at it. So, that's actually rather difficult to film, isn't it? Uh, but yeah, if you're interested, check out Crimson Guitars. We also have our own range of uh, stains um, in water-based and spirit-based, and there's a new range of stains coming out soon, or two or three new ranges of stains, actually. So, a, a lot of that. Fret leveling, fret cutting saws, fret leveling saws. I'm gonna level these frets with a saw. And of course, you know, a dragon, because you've got to. Um, I, I love hand tools. I will use them to distraction <laughs> wherever, wherever possible. However, uh, however, one always needs clamps, which I forgot to talk about. I've got a, a plethora of G clamps and uh, these fantastic beasties from quick releases from Triton um, and there's some Betty clamps over that side which you'll see in a bit but we also need machine tools and drill bits and all of that drill bits for example these are Famag they are oh look at that in the background I hit a hundred thousand subscribers I actually that came out as really facetious didn't it mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not that I am not that guy. Um, I don't know where to put the thing. I, I, it's behind the drill bits at the moment. Famag make incredible drill bits. And the, the, out of everything here, I'm saying you can buy new, you can buy second hand, you get what you pay for. Um, drill bits, and to a slightly lesser extent, router bits. Spend the money on those things. A good drill bit is essential. A cheap one will destroy your guitar for you. Um, now, they often say drawers are where tools go to die, and it's true. I mean, that's a, this is a, for making violin pegs. I haven't made a violin peg in years. Um, Perfling cutter, but uh, in various places I've got bits and pieces. Ooh, silver. Um, fine, I'll put it back in the drawer. <laughs> I didn't know where to put it. Um, so yeah, you've got to have some stuff that's just organised and 
left in drawers. I use uh, the record power grinder a lot. This here is a, a silicon wheel that I use for, to clean up rusty old tools. So that little anvil uh, or stake anvil will be looking like this at some point soon, if not, if not shinier. Uh, my machine of choice for sharpening is a Robert Sorby Pro Edge. Uh, this will take a tool from rough, never been, or freshly restored, but with the wrong angle, etc., in minutes. And then I will go off to either the uh, Shapton Stones or something like that, or the, uh, the Scary Sharp system was that something I'm falling in love with at the moment. I don't need a guillotine, but I want a guillotine. Uh, so yeah, for those times when I'm messing around with, with metal, I've got a guillotine. I've got a, um, down underneath here, there's a fantastic little roller for, for bending metal. I can make rings and bits and pieces. Again, uh, record herald lathe. I don't turn anywhere near as much as I would like to, but it's a stunning machine. I use, in fact, I use quite a lot of record gear. Their, their customer service is second to none. I'm not a sponsor. I'm not a sponsor. I'm not a. I'm not being paid to say this. I love the brand. I have done for since pretty much the first major major machine I bought uh, after a spindle sander, which lasted 15 years, um, that was by Jet, I think. The first major purchase I had was a, a, a big record bandsaw, and it is still going downstairs. Uh, old Myford lathe, this is for, uh, this is engineering, and obviously there's a, a, a tool co. Milling machine, we use that to mill brass nuts and bits and pieces. We used to use that to make our notch straight edges here. Um, I think the notch straight edges were actually a loss leader for years. Um, that is not the correct way to make a notch straight edge. Um, I will use this to make guitar nuts, uh, guitar knobs, sorry, or bits and pieces. It's just too nice of a machine to not have. Um, and then, Daily use as a guitar builder, router table, as scary as I find them. This is the Triton Work Center, which also has a table saw uh, section over there. You can tell <laughs> this is me trying to uh, clean up. Oh, here we go. I mentioned John Clothier earlier. That's one of his bowls. Actually, that's a cool effect. Yeah. Hi. How's it going? Uh, Fanag, their, um, their Forstner bits are second to none and just, just incredible. Uh, so yes, pillar drill, drill press if you're in the States. Okay, let's very quickly, essential tools for guitar building. There are some things that you just can't do it without, like, um, like everything that Crimson makes. Of course, a uh, leveling file or um, uh, a fret leveling beam. Uh, I wouldn't do it without a notch straight edge. I wouldn't ever want to do it without a fret rocker, for example. So there's some specialist things like that that you, you have to have. But one or two hand planes, as I said earlier, a jointer, a number three or four, and a, um, and a block plane uh, are pretty much essential pretty much essential. Uh, you need one or two chisels, you will need one or two gouges, you'll need screwdrivers and rulers and protractors, and uh, I wouldn't want to do it without a vernier gauge, for example. Um, you can build a guitar without a pillar drill. You can build a guitar without a router table, but oh my giddy aunt, you wouldn't want to. Um, this makes life so much easier. For example, when you're routing out, you need a router. I'm going to do a hand tool. Only, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to do a hand tool only build at some point, soon. Soon, I've got to. Um, but it's not going to be fun. Uh, it's not going to be fun without a router. Does a router class as a hand tool? I'm going to have to do a a, a non-powered tool only build. There we go. Uh, anyway, so various things like that. A big old sander. Um, this. 
batteries for the for the audio. Do I still have audio? I still have audio. Um, this is a fantastic uh, uh, tool. It's the oscillating spindle belt sander by Triton. You swap this whole thing out and you can just have a, a spindle sander. The first machine I bought was a jet spindle sander and this is just used all the time. And, oh no, I can't do it backwards. Where are we? I'll leave it. Uh, it, it, it angles. In fact, I was just about to lose all my screws. Um, now, bandsaw is another one of those things. Uh, this is the tiny, tiny BS250 from Record. It's fine. Uh, it is, it's fine. It looks like a hobbyist machine, and it's in the same class as a hobbyist machine, but it's got all of the characteristics and the, um, like a, a cast iron table, for example, of the bigger machines. Uh, and it is, it's very, very good. And then again, stuff. You don't want to make a guitar without a random orbital sander. Um, Merca are industry leaders. Um, I would take that Merca over a Felder any day. Um, although I'm always up for a challenge, so that could be interesting. Um, spindle sanders, this here is the Triton handheld spindle sander. I use that every now and then if I, uh, uh, if I need to. There's various planers. I don't use hand planes very often uh, or powered electric planers very often. I've, I've taken, uh, not that one, the smaller one home for a number of jobs actually. Um, a router is the tool of the day. Router is, you need a router, period. I've been using the Triton, uh, Triton routers for, hell, well over a decade now, must be. Again, I feel old. Uh, I love it. Um, so yeah, it, just bits and pieces. Uh, Triton are, Triton are, I am a friend of the brand. Am I a brand ambassador? I don't know. Crimson's a brand ambassador? I don't know. I love what they do. And uh, yeah, uh, support our partners by supporting me, by support the partners. What does that Triton thing YouTubers say? Support us by supporting the people who support us. There's a way to say it. Um, I've been a fan of Triton for years and years and years, and they are now helping us out, which is quite nice. Um, wow. I feel like I've just gone through a car wash. I don't know why I said that, but I do. Um, I.e. I'm the car and somebody's just been beating me with information. Um, this isn't even looking at the interesting bits and pieces I've got up there. Uh, it is not looking at the factory floor down there where we've got bigger machines and uh, yeah, incredible stuff. I could and kind of want to build guitars in workshops that are much less well equipped than I am lucky enough to have. I would love, I would love to go to a random person's workshop who happens to be a fan of the channel and who is within driving distance and build a guitar with only what they've got in their, in their workshop. That would be cool. Um, however, I am incredibly lucky. I, I have the vintage tool shop I have Crimson, I have you guys following me, which enables me to, to get all of these things and, and love them, and I do. Anyway, uh, I'm waxing lyrical. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, do not forget that after this little bit, you're going to be able to see a time-lapse of all of this coming together. Um, I haven't even shown off the party trick. The, th this whole idea was that I would be able to have tools in various configurations and places. I want to have a central section here with hammers on. Oh, that's, <sighs> that's the problem. Caught on a little bit of something. Um, so I'm thinking about having some hammers sliding along back here, but essentially, um, yeah, that was, a, that was fun to make. Took a little bit longer than it should have. Um, this was my first 
serious attempt at mass dovetailing. A bit of fun. So little adjustable dovetailing, dovetail marking. It's not a dovetail thing at all. It's a little marking gauge. Uh, it's got fine adjustment as well. I'm marking the thickness of the Paduke into the end. Working out where my dovetails are gonna be. Mainly by eye. It always helps to mark out the waste area. It is soul destroyingly depressing when you cut out the wrong bit. There's a Triton Auto Jaws, very interesting little clamp. Self adjusts to different thicknesses. So I cut away the waste by hand. I could have done all of this very rapidly and repeatedly with a router table, etc but I, I like to learn how to do things by hand before moving on to machines. Here we are on the other side. So these are the pins, if I'm getting the terminology correct. It really is a very straightforward pro process. It's about muscle memory uh, and getting it precise. I did not do the best of jobs. Is that uh, Triton Auto Jaw again? little rasping to tidy it up. Measure, measure, cut. Nice and strong. And we're good. I couldn't even pull it off without a vice. And that is a microcosm of the whole process, repeated ad infinitum at great length, taking me away from building guitars. Worth it then. Bring on the Arthur tunes. I listen to so many podcasts 
while making this tool rack. Now this saw self It guides itself in the marker cut. Uh, you can make that even better by uh, chiseling a, a small channel there, but uh, it worked well enough for my purposes. My inexpert purposes. And you'll see that none of these are particularly even. I, I didn't want it to look like a machine made uh, thing. I'm also not good enough to <laughs> make it look like a machine made thing. Success. Well, <laughs> a framework of success, shall we say. Now we figure out what I'm putting on there. Planes, I suspect. Planes, hammers, saws, planes, saws. Frankly, the saws need to be in this. How the hell am I going to do saws? That's going to have to be all the saws somewhere else and rulers and drawing instruments. Oh, poop, I've got to get leveling files. Leveling files, pretty interesting files. Okay, okay, pull the whole thing up. Okay, saws. Let's put you there. Source. I've got too many tools. Okay, so the hand drills are an essential part of my life. Hammers can go on this. Actually, that's that's ideal for hammers. Drawing instruments. I'm not sure how to deal with those. These things all sticking out. What we're looking at is something with help holes in. So that is there. I have a number of holes in it, and these tools are going to go in sideways, so we can just rip them out. My squares, pliers as well. I've got loads of squares. So I've got loads of those tools that are gonna go on that one little shelf.
right. I could probably fit another one. Whoa. So we have a default setting of that. Yeah. <laughs> I love making things and having good tools is pretty much essential if you want to make good things. Um, and I'm, I'm very, very lucky. So well, there we go. That is my studio in its current iteration and a few of the bits and pieces I have in here. Um, let me know in the comments below. Let me know in the comments below what you think you could build a guitar with. What is your limited tool build? Um, what are the tools here that you think that uh, um, are just totally superfluous? What are the tools here that you think are absolutely essential to you? Give me your lists, top 10 tools for guitar building uh, in a small workshop. That's a, that sounds like a video title. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do that. Um, if you like this video, please subscribe, click like, let us know in the comments below. If you didn't, tell me what I can do to make life better. I'll see you soon.